Ha, there we go. There's no sound. Hello. <laughs> Should I repeat? I gave you all the secrets to life just now. <laughs> all right. So hello, everyone. I named everyone that came up, but I'm going to do it again. So my printer is out. Um, I think it printed now. And this is what we're painting. It's not that one, but isn't that gorgeous? So if you're in the membership, you get this one. It's in there and it's ready for you. But this is what we're painting tonight. Isn't that cute? I love that one. I can hear you. Wonderful. I'm glad you guys can hear me. Let's do this again. I like doing this. I like saying hi to everyone. I'm going to do it really fast. I might miss some of you. So first up was Teresa, Michigan, Dawn from Chicago, Tina, Alabama, Carolyn, she's from Surrey, BC. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> Jessica from Georgia, uh, Malia from Kingdom of Tonga. Welcome, welcome. Thank you, Tina. I think you sent some stars there. See, this is what I get. It's like a blank screen, but I know it's stars. Thank you so much. Vicky is here from Washington. Mary Dale is in the house. Hello, hello. Sheila is here from Illinois. Good evening. This is my first time painting with you. I am from Catherine, Ontario, Canada, and that's Anne-Marie and Kevin. Welcome, welcome. Um, is, is both of you painting or just you, Anne-Marie? Welcome. Alfia, Kansas. Sue is here from Nova Scotia. And then it's all the no sound messages. I'm so sorry. Um, Winnie from Louisiana. And all the no sound. Janine from Oregon, welcome. <laughs> How did I not see that? I can't hear you messages. <laughs> there we go. The sound was back and welcome to everyone i think i missed a whole bunch of messages there jean from arkansas barbados uh, yasmin welcome welcome uh, chloe from ohio quebec sylvia welcome karen and owen sound on uh, from owen sound ontario welcome so nice to have all of you um just anne marie Oh, there we go. Just Anne Marie's painting. Joyce is here from California. Stephanie is here from Utah. My son just came up. He follows someone on uh, social media that lives in Utah. And he goes, Mom, I'm moving to Utah. Look at these photos. And it's someone with an off road truck. And we were going through the photos. It's beautiful out there. Krista Ray is here from West Kootenays. How are you guys doing over there? Oh, I'm missing some of the messages. Tina is here from Tennessee. Uh, Penny is here from London, Ontario. Is it nine o'clock already for you, Penny? I know it's late on the other side. Oh, did I see Sydney? Consuela? Yes, she's from Sydney. Welcome, welcome. She painted her pet the other day. You should post your photos so people can see it. It was gorgeous. Cindy is here from Louisiana. Morning, sweethearts from Campbell River. And that is Joe from Vancouver Island. Welcome, welcome. It is beautiful here. Yes, he was talking about it. And then we went through the photos and then he named a few other places around the area that he loves following. Clearer skies today, but still large fires. Oh, thinking of you guys. I know it's crazy out there right now. Jennifer says, good evening. Tanya is here from Yelm, Washington. First time watch watching. Welcome, Ashley. I do fun art, not fine art, so you can relax, you can have fun. Hello, Enan from Taiwan. How are you doing? I wonder if Kiki is joining us from Taiwan tonight. Very hot here, I can imagine. And that was... Penny says it's really hot there. Oh, Montreal, Quebec is in the house. Welcome, Shelly Ann. All right, what time is it? It's past six already. Are you guys ready to paint? So I love doing this one. Um, you can, let's see, do I move it a little this way? Like that. 
you can change the colors do any colors you want to in the background um have fun with it so i've done this one in all kinds of colors my favorite color is doing a yellow background and maybe similar to the yellow you see on this painting like a light yellow background with the grays and the birds and the white moon it's gorgeous like grays with yellow is absolutely gorgeous but you can do any colors you want to I went through a stage where everything I painted was pink. So I did this one in pinks and purples. I bring some pink and purple into the tree. So don't hold back. I'm still going to talk to you. I'm still going to instruct in black and white. Maybe I'll add the little red heart in there. It's not on the photo I posted. I did that a little while ago. Um, but I'll talk to you if you're, if you're using different colors. Don't hold back from using colors when you do um, this painting. Because mine is black and white, it doesn't mean yours have to be black and white. If you love color, then throw it on there. All right, Cherie is here. She's from Vancouver, BC. Welcome, welcome. Uh, Linda is here from VT. Patricia, hello. Bad storm here today, but we did okay. But it's 9 p.m. We'll watch and paint tomorrow. I know, Patricia, have fun. I love that you are here watching. Um, Athens GA, first time. Naomi, welcome, welcome. Are you recording? Yes, I'm always recording. So this is what happens. I record the session and then I post it onto Facebook and it stays here until um, tomorrow this time. If you are in the membership, then you'll find it there. The membership is currently closed for new members, um, but will open up in the fall again for new members. So if you want to be added to the waiting list for when the membership open, uh, you can go to the website. It is posted there and then go find the memberships and add your email address to the waiting list. But it's closed right now. And I'll talk a little bit more about why I closed it in a minute. All right. Are you guys ready? So like I said, do the colors that you want to. I'm going to use black and white and then I'll do my little red heart that's up at the top there. I'm painting on an 11 by 14 canvas. I'm going to get rid of that banner. 11 by 14 canvas. And remember, a, what is that? Two, three weeks ago, I went and bought Craft Smart Paints. I'm going to paint with that again. You will need something uh, round to paint your moon in. So when I posted the the photo I posted had a really big moon right here. You can do a small one like that, or you can do this whole corner in a moon. I am going to use, um, where is my brush? I'm gonna use a small round brush and a gray paint to draw in where my moon's gonna be. So use something round. I'm gonna use my color wheel. So I'm gonna go really big today and just do the corner like the photo that I shared um, with the original event that I posted on Facebook. If you wanna do something smaller, you can do that. I'm just gonna use this, that might be a little bit big. Let's find something smaller. You wanna do a round circle for where your moon's gonna be. Maybe I'll freehand it. Let's see if I can still do a round circle. All right, so use your small brush. I have black and white on my canvas. And I'm going to mix up a gray color for this. Small round brush, mixing up a little bit of gray. I'm going to do a round circle. Right, so you can use something, put it down and do your circle, maybe in the corner, maybe you use a smaller tub just to do a circle. What I like to do is have my birds inside the circle. So I'm going to do it right here. And I'm just going to go right there. It's easier if you kind of go round and round in the air and then reshape it as you um, as you've drawn it. Oh, I think that's good. I have I have a circle. There we go. Hello, Carrie Ann. <laughs> Manvir is here. Hello, hello. So that is step one to do. Step two is to draw in where you want your trees to be. So depending how big, 
big your moon is, you might just have two trees, you might want to squeeze in three, or you might just want to have one. It's up to you. But I like to have a tree with a branch where my birds sit on. So, and those are just lines down. So I'm just going to do a line here and then a little bit of this corner so that they, it looks like there's a tree right at the edge here. So just a line down. I find it easier to go like this and then I can do more of a straight line. So this is where my tree is going to be like that. That's going to be my tree and then another line here for the other tree. It's a tree. I hope you're not using a ruler. <laughs> it doesn't have to be a straight line. Wash your brush. Some people prefer to do their lines with a pencil. I'm just using jumping in with the paint. Beverly is here from Alabama. Welcome, welcome. Carol is here from Santa Cruz watching. We'll try and paint later. There you go. And I leave the video on. So if you want to paint later, it's all good. Some people might prefer to do some sunset colors. Just choose any colors you want to. We're going to start off with painting in the moon right here. And what I like to do is use a lot of white paint. And then I'm going to use my finger and dab a little bit of gray on the inside, just so that it has a little bit of texture. I am not sure if you'll be able to see. Oh, you can see the texture in here. I do that with my finger. Just a little bit of color so that the moon is not just bright white paint. And I'm going to use my bigger brush to do, to add the white paint. Michelle is here from North Carolina. Welcome, welcome. So big brush. Some white paint. You can wet your brush first. I like to wet my brush. Go into the white paint. And just paint your moon um, white. Lots of white paint. I did a lot, a lot of lines here. When I start painting in the background, I can make it a little bit more rounder. Lots of white paint. And then I'm going to use my finger with a little bit of gray paint to add that texture in. So I'm mixing up a little bit of gray on my palette, not too dark. You want a really light gray color. And then I use my index finger, a little bit of paint. And then I start dabbing and it starts forming these little marks on there and actually looks like craters and some texture on your moon. And I do kind of like a moon, half moon shape here. And you want to do it while the paint is still wet. So we did our lines, we painted this white and then we're using a really light gray and very little paint on my finger and then I start dabbing so there's a lot when I put it down but then I just keep dabbing and because the white paint is wet it just starts blending in together. Look at that. I'm going to fill up this area here. Just dab, dab, dab. Just keep going and you can do as much as you want to. How much, um, how much gray, how much white do you want in there? If you like a darker moon, oops, I want it white there. 
then um, use a little bit more gray. I'm going randomly everywhere, but this area is a little bit darker. And then in here, there's still some dabbing with a finger over there, but it's not as um, dark as here. You can see it's much lighter. You can go right up to your lines because we're going to paint around that too. So fun to do. A little bit of gray, and then a little bit of white. Remember to breathe while you do this. That's going to be my moon. It's a little too much white there. If, you, if you're doing it and it's too high contrast or whatever the case may be, you kind of paint over it and then just start dabbing again and see what you get. Wait, if we want to paint later, where do we get the recording? It's going to be on my Facebook page until this time tomorrow. So if you want to paint it um, within the, there you go, when he answered you, thank you so much. It's up for 24 hours and then it moves to the Paint Night at Home membership for the members to enjoy. The glare is uh, windy, I know, so that's why I bring it up for you and bring it closer. The glare is, I guess, how it works now with the cameras is it adjusts to the light. And then sometimes it's light, sometimes it's dark. But if you want to see, just throw in a question in the comments and I can bring it closer to you. See all these crazy lines here? A lot of people are like, Frida, how do you do it? We're going to use all that. It's all good. Don't worry. See how it's now so bright. I move closer. <laughs> I've no idea how to cut down the glare. I think the systems are now so fancy that it adjusts, but it's it's funny, later in the painting, when there's more color, it becomes a little easier. But because it's so white, it does that. But keep asking and I'll bring it closer so you can have a closer look. See, now it looks fine. <laughs> it's like, I don't know where is a setting so I can go, don't adjust, just stay the way you are. <laughs> All right. So when you're ready to move on, just type in ready, and then we'll move on to the next step to paint the backgrounds. I'm having a, a sangria tonight. What are you having? This is, oh, it looks so dark in the <laughs> video. Cindy is ready. She's like, come on, let's paint the background. Naomi is ready. Jean is ready. I love it. Melissa is ready. Stephanie's ready. Akasha is here. How are you? She is ready. Manvira is ready. Mary Dale. Bubbly. <laughs> All right. There's so many of you ready. Thank you. All right. So we're going to move on. We're going to start off. What I like to do is a little bit more color here. So a little bit darker and then it goes lighter further out. It's like odd, right? So play with your color. So if you're doing pink and purple, you can blend in a little bit more pink here and then go into purple, uh, yellow and oranges. You can maybe go a little bit more yellow around and then go orange. You can play with any colors you want to. I like to play with different colors here. Tonight I'm painting black and white because the example is black and white, but um, 
play with colors if you want to paint with colors. If you're going just with purple in the background, use purple and then go with a little bit of white. Um, if you're just using yellow, use yellow with a little bit of white. So if you're not combining two colors, then play with a darker and a lighter color. All right, so I'm going to use my um, flat brush still. And I got paint everywhere on it, so I'm just going to wipe that down. And I'm going to start off with a darker, a little bit um, darker gray than what I use here. Use my bigger brush. I'm going to add a little bit of black in there. A little bit darker gray around the moon. And this is where you're, you can define the shape of your moon a little bit more. So I'm going to go with my brush and just go around it. I'm still using my big brush. And now you're going to look at it and see where do I want to make it a little bit more rounder? Do I need to take something out? See here, it looks like it's got a little bit of a, I think that's good enough for me. And I'm going to start brushing in some of the darker gray, putting it down, moving around. And as I go higher up, I'm going to pick up more white paint. So less gray, more white and go lighter and lighter further. So just keep moving your brush and you can see I don't have lots of paint on the canvas. I really rub it into the canvas. I know some people that paint with me really like to load up the canvas with lots of paint and the texture just sits there. Go for it. If that's how you want to paint, then do that. And I do a lot of movement so my colors really blend together. See there? I had the darker gray, picked up more white, and now I'm just blending all the colors together. Don't worry about this. We're going to paint here a little earlier, a little later. So if you're going right into your tree, that's okay. We're going to paint down here later. If you like it more streaky, you can add some darker streaks in there. The more you move your brush, the more the colors will blend. Less movement, it will be more streaky. If you have your brush in the darker color here and you move it to the top, you're going to add some of that darker color from here to there. So keep track what's on your brush when you move your brush around. And now we're going to do the same at the bottom. I'm going to start off with a darker gray. Up lots of paint. I'll put that down here. And as I go further away from my moon, I'm going to pick up a little bit more white paint. Keep moving your brush, keep the same curve as the lines that you've drawn. Don't forget to breathe. <laughs> Only drinking water. There we go. <laughs> I guess I'm ready, but I could blend for the rest of my life. I once took a big piece of two by four wood and right from the one edge to the other edge, I just blended in different colors. It was so much fun. Just blending different colors together. It was pretty fun. And when it's done, I'm like, oh, I could do that again. Just sit there, go from blue into green and colors that I normally wouldn't put together, like purple and yellow and it's fun to see. Tight but good. And you doll. I am good, thank you. Me and my baby are painting. I love that. It's such a special time, right? There we go. If you like it a little bit more streaky, so it's quite blended mine over here but if you like it a little bit more streaky then take some of that darker color and kind of put some lines down like this keep the curve of the moon and then just blend it in a little bit so i'll do another darker one here 
it's not sitting there we go and then softly blend I feel like it's streaky go and add some extra lines in there and you can do this with different colors too so if you did everything in pink why not go add a little light purple or even a little light yellow and then you need to do add some color into this area here and you can see that I just added a light gray color here Also keeping my brush strokes kind of kind of curved when I work here. The reason I'm not painting the whole background and the and the trees on top, it takes a while to dry. But if you have all the time, then you can do that. See how I'm going into the trees with my paint? It's all good. We're gonna paint right over that. If you're painting with family or looking for a project to do with the whole family this one's so fun um, you can turn the canvases this way and then have the trees on here and spread out three or four canvases so each person has their canvas so some of them have birds on their branches some people have the moon some people just have branches like the branches at the top and then you create this long painting that can hang above your couch or each one still goes home with their painting but they know that it connects with someone else's painting so much fun this one to do as a collaborative with friends or family i think that's it do want to make this a little rounder over here see this corner it looks a little better and we have 85 people online we'll do the same when i have i don't know five i'll make it eight to ten readies and then we'll move on to the next step if you're having fun blending colors over there then don't rush i post the video right after so take your time just just paint relax don't rush because we're moving on it's all good I love all the radius that comes in. What colors are you guys doing, Akasha? Who's doing different colors? Let me know. Let me know. Melissa, I have a friend in South Africa whose name is Melissa Green. <laughs> I just imagine that you are her painting with me. You are you, but now I have both of you. <laughs> metallic pink, metallic purple and white. Oh, Brandy, that sounds real neat. Can't wait to see it.
so funny. I've been in Canada 12 years, but I still see people that I knew in South Africa. So I'll see someone walk with long black hair that hangs right down their back. And I, I'll imagine that it's my best friend from South Africa, or I'll see, um, you sometimes hear a voice and it sounds like someone you knew back years ago. It's such nice little triggers for great memories. I just love it. So Melissa, your name brings back wonderful memories. I just love that. Three um, shares of purple, gold, silver, and rosé. Rose. <laughs> Was it rosé? <laughs> My daughter Maya said hello for <laughs> oh, from a fellow redhead. Hello, Maya. <laughs> See, funny, I have heard of others with the same name. Funny, right? I don't know many Melissa's, but I do know two Melissa Greens. <laughs> All right, so let's move on. We're gonna paint in the tree. So what we're gonna do is the tree has a darker side and a lighter side. And uh, when I show you how to do these steps, so if you have a bigger canvas and you have multiple trees, do one tree at a time. I've seen where people have multiple trees and then they do the first step on one tree and the next one and next one, but we need it to blend together. So we're gonna do a strip of white paint and a strip of gray paint and then we're going to blend it together both paints need to be wet for it to blend together so if you have multiple trees just do one at a time because if you're going to get to the last tree and then go back to the first one the white might be dry and when you add the gray it's not going to blend so we're going to do a line down with white and a line down with gray and when you look at it here you can see see how the tree is lighter here and darker there so before we do the marks, we're going to make it first be lighter on the one side, darker on the other side. I'm going to show you how to do that. So you need some white paint on your palette. And you need some black. And we're, I'm going to stick to, to my big brush to do this. I'm mixing up some gray. We'll start with the gray. Don't go too dark with it, but that medium's almost the same as what you did inside the moon. Sorry, just outside the moon. <laughs> so that's gonna be my color. Make sure you mix enough so that you can go all the way down on your tree. Lots of gray paint. Gray paint on my brush, and I'm gonna do this side. And you wanna go right up to your line. line of gray paint like that so half of your tree is now gray clean your brush and then paint the other side white let's go all the way down with white paint like that see one side white one side gray it's not really touching in the middle yet i haven't painted there but now with the white paint on my brush i'm going to start moving my brush in between the two colors and start blending this together and you're going to go from the darker color into the lighter color and then back to the darker color and that's how you're going to blend you might have a smaller tree might have to use a smaller brush See how it softly blends from the one to the other? So starting the darker, go into the lighter, go back. But this has to be wet for this to work. 
That's why I say do one tree at a time. How cool is that? Huh? Nice way to blend a tree and then do that last little bit up here. Thanks for the video. Linda, you are most welcome. All right, so what did I do? I painted a strip of gray down, a strip of white paint, and then with the white paint on my brush, I moved into the darker color, into the lighter color, and back. And remember what I said earlier about keeping track what's in your brush? If you're in the darker here, and then you put it down in the white, then you put paint there. See how I touched it with the white? But I'm okay with that. I'm going to leave that right there. But keep track of what's on your brush. So when you do your blending, if you lift your hand, just make sure you put it back to whatever color is on your brush. Just move in between the two. And if you're doing, I did this on a uh, 20 by 36, one of those long canvases. And I did multiple trees, like thin ones like that. You just use a smaller brush. I just have like these ones. And you do one at a time, do a gray line. Sometimes I'd have two brushes in my hand. So do my gray line, do my white line, and then blend the two together. Do the gray line, do the white line, blend the two together. And then you get trees like that. So fun and easy, right? I love painting birch trees. I have a three foot by two foot birch tree painting I'm working on. Love doing it. And then for this one, I'm just gonna do a really light gray right there. There's not gonna be much blending. I don't have a lot of tree here. If you have a box canvas like that, you'll wrap your tree markings around the canvas here. Just painting it gray. Might make it a little bit whiter so it stands out a little bit more. We're going to give it a black outline. So if yours looks like it disappears a little bit, it's all good. We're going to give it a black outline, but you can still see it. Love birch trees too, right? They're so fun. And there's so many different ways to do them. You can use um, a palette knife to do the markings. You can just use a brush. And I'm going to show you the brush. I'll show you how to use a palette knife um, on my palette here, on my painting palette. But this one I just do with a brush, but I'll show you both ways if you want to try it. Thank you for the ideas. You are most welcome. I have to tell you guys, I started a new, a new sport yesterday not yesterday, last Wednesday, my son invited us to go play golf with him. So I went to a driving range for the first time. Does anyone play golf? And now I might be addicted to swinging that golf club and hitting balls. <laughs> it's been so much fun. We've been four times. My thumb is so sore from the way and right in the center of my back from all the, but so much fun. I really thought it was very boring to play golf, <laughs> but it's been so much fun to go out and play. I miss the ball. Oh, I miss it many times. 
<laughs> and then I get these giggle fits when I miss it. It's so funny. But that's all right. It's still fun though. My hubby took me and the kids to drumming range too. My son doesn't look at the ball when he swings and it goes real fast. I know. I think the first few times I closed my eyes when I was about to hit the ball, I do silly things. All right. I'm supposed to keep my legs straight, but as soon as I get to the ball, I stand up. Oh, I don't even go where the ball, I don't even look where the ball's going. I just pick up the next one and hit it. Who knows? I don't know. <laughs> I don't care where it's going. Now I'm better. <laughs> Fast and far. There you go. I got pretty consistent now. So I know which is my favorite iron and I know which one, um, how far I can hit with it. So the... I'm getting to know that, so it's funny. <laughs> Same here, couldn't hit it. It was rough in the beginning. So bad. All right, are you guys ready to move on? Slightly bend your knees, yes. Slightly bend it and keep it bended until you're done, right? So I slightly bend it and then I swing, but as soon as I get to the ball, I would get up. I'm better now. It's like the last day, two days ago when we went, I'm like, I and you just feel that it feels good. It's so funny. Every time I'm like, I'm not hitting the ball anymore. I'm swinging. Like it just swings and I take it right through. And I'm like, you start feeling that it's better. That's an echo. With golf a lot of the time I swing and miss. And I fall down hard. Oh, Joe. My friend warned me, she said she falls down too when she, when she goes, we're going golfing next Tuesday. So I look forward. It will be my first nine hole. So wish everyone in the in town luck. There'd be balls flying all over. All right, are you guys ready to move on? I'm gonna go to the next step if you guys are ready. Ready. Hi, Wendy Donaldson. How are you doing? It's okay that you're late. Thank you for saying hi, but the video is there for you. Hi, Katie. Welcome, welcome. You guys are having fun blending? I know it's fun to blend these, these two colors together. So first thing I'm gonna show you, I'm late also, it's all good. I'm gonna post the video in, in about 20 minutes and then you'll be able to have fun with this one. Hi, Terry. Um, I'm quickly gonna show you how you can do the markings with a palette knife, but that's not what I'm gonna do on here. So what I like to do, so if you have one of these or one of these, but a knife, or a credit card if you have a credit card same thing you just need something thin and flat like this to pick up paint so what i like to do is i'm going to show you this way so i would take a little bit of black paint and add it onto a brush like that and then i would make some markings on a palette knife like this See how I have a little bit of paint on there? Wait, I'll do that. Can you see that? I'll add a little bit more here and there. And then you're gonna put it right here on this line and then you're gonna drag out the markings. So I, you'll see that all my markings is slightly curved. They kind of curve like that and that makes the, the tree look round. So you're gonna take that paint you're gonna put it down and you're gonna drag it out like that. See how it touches and how it's different every time. And that's how you can add the markings to your tree. So I'll do more, a little bit of black paint and then here and there on your brush, add some black paint. Put it down at the edge of your tree right there, angled like this down like that and then you're going to drag and every time you do it it's going to grab paint in a certain 
different area and then you can create those markings always a little bit curved but that's how you use that that's the palette knife but i'm going to do it with my my full bit see this one or you can use a flat brush the small flat that i had earlier you can use this one too Pick up very little black paint. And we're going to do a few black ones. We're going to do a few gray ones. There are all kinds of colors on there. We're going to put it down right on the edge here. And you're going to drag it out, barely touching, and keep the line curved. So as high as it starts here, that's where it will be on that side. Add some lines. And you can go from the other side too. I do a lot more from this side than what I do from that side. Sometimes make your brush flat like that so you have some thinner lines too. And you can go with some gray ones and have some in the middle, but keep them curved. Some thinner ones. Don't overthink it. In the beginning, when I used to do these trees, I'm like, where am I supposed to do them? One thing, see how I did these exactly the same distance apart? Try not to do that. Try and keep them very um, random, some a little bigger, some a little smaller. I did some darker ones. You can do some thin ones. And pick up some white paint. Picking up some white. I'm going to do some white ones in between. Keep that curve when you do these. Isn't that cool? Look at that. I normally do a lot more light gray and white ones from this side and darker ones from the other side. Very random, just play. Don't forget your tree at the edge here. If you're doing, um, if you're wrapping it around the edges, you're gonna take these little marks right around the edge like that. Looks so neat when your tree, when your tree wraps around the canvas. I'm not gonna do many because I hold on to my canvas there, but you do wanna make some marks on there. We're still going to do um, the outline of the tree, but these are just a few markings that you want to do. Right. With that same brush, we're going to do a branch for the birds to sit on. So I'm going to grab a little bit of a really light gray, almost white. A really light gray. I'm going to do a branch. I want my birds to be right in the moon here. So my branch is going to go up here like that. So I'm going to start here and do my branch going like that. And you can add another branch to it if you want to. See how I have it going right into the moon, go up and then a little one going down like that. That's cool. Really starting to look like a real tree, right? And if you if you keep working it, so instead of having all these patches, but if you keep going covering the whole tree with those marks, they almost start popping out of the canvas. Look so real and it's so fun to do these. I've done them so many different birch trees using filbert brushes, using liner brushes. When I just started painting, I used to, I used to take a, where is it? a little brush like this and I would do all these little lines on the, on the tree and then go in with bigger marks and then the white on top and then the palette knife. I could do hours doing that. Painting is such a great uh, mindfulness activity. You can spend hours doing something if you focus on the process and not the end result, so not rushing to get it done, not painting for someone else, but just painting, you can spend hours just on here and it's it's going to feel so good because you're just playing, right?
Oh, Leanne, I get that. I had an unfortunate time phone call, so I'll paint on the replay, just watching now. I get those too. I have to let mine go when I have to go live. All right, does that look neat already? Just here where it goes into the tree. If you're wondering what I did, I'm just going to kind of make it fade right into the tree. Like that. See how it just kind of fades in there? Keep rubbing the paint. It's all good if you can't get it like that. Oh. So little to do, outlines and birds. That's it, and then we're done. Wendy, I'm doing good, thank you for asking. I'm doing really good. Uh, a few weeks ago, I posted about being the, pro the um, a coordinator for a youth program that I'll be leading teaching um, our journaling to at-risk youth. Well, we're having a fundraiser right now. So we have some of my paintings and other artists' paintings on auction. So if anyone wants to contribute, I'm going to post the link to, or if anyone wants to bid on some paintings and help these youth, I'm going to post the link to that. You can also make a donation if you don't want to bid and just want to donate, even if it's just $5. I will post the link right after when I do my little selfie, I'll post the link for that. And it's for the Infinite Expansion Foundation. This is a friend of mine that is running this fabulous foundation. And his main focus is to help at-risk youth so that they don't get into the wrong circle. So we want to later on create a center where these kids can go. Um, to hang out after school and when they don't have anywhere else to go. So um, thank you, Wendy, you've seen it, yes. So it's such a great project. I'm so excited to be part of it. Um, and I I'm, I'm, cannot wait until we start in September to facilitate these events for the youth. But we need funding. So we're, we're for now doing fundraisers, but we're looking at getting some grants to get this done. And in a few years, we want to build a big center um, which would be a really like a cool hangout place for youth between the ages of 13 and 18 and older and younger, but just a place where they could come instead of going um, like hang out in the wrong circles. And a lot of the mentors that we have have lived the life. They have lived experiences and they're not just talking. I'm very lucky where I am. But hearing these people's stories of what they've gone through and why they made the bad decisions they did, it's they need the kids need mentoring. So I'm very excited. So I'm going to post the link. So if you know someone that can sponsor, donate, donate art, uh, donate money or would want to be involved, we'd love to hear from them. So I'm going to post that after this session. So awesome. Some really nice art. And a great cause. Thank you, Wendy. Yes, we've been really lucky to get art from some really famous artists too. All right, so I'm going to show you how to do outlines and the birds. We're going to do the birds first and then the same brush and black paint we're going to use for the outlines and for those little, little branches that you see there. Right, so painting the birds, it's so easy. You're going to love it. We're going to use, you want to use a round brush. I'm going to use this one. It's really round. This one's just having a bad hair day. Wet my brush, pick up some black paint, roll your brush in the paint, fill up all the hair with paint. I like the craft paints because they're a little runny. If you're painting with a heavy body, the acrylic paint, take your brush into the water, mix a little water and paint so that it's more like this kind of consistency, like an ink. Right, lots of paint. And the first little shape is like a little leaf. And if you want your two little birds to look like they're madly in love, you kind of draw them so that they, the heads are closer together. And I'm going to do that with my birds. I normally do a bigger one and a smaller one. My husband's the bigger one and I'm the smaller one. 
you, some people do their whole family. So mom, dad, and all the kids, grandma, grandpa, and all the grandkids, it's up to you. You can do as many as you want. So I'm gonna do, see how the top part is, it's much longer at the bottom than what it is at the top. So you're gonna go like this. It's like a little leaf or a diamond shape. That's the one. And then this one is on the other side. Like that. And then we'll do these little circles at the top. Oh, mine's heads are touching. They are head to head. That's it. So it's a little leaf, so that shape like that. And then you do a little circle at the top. And sometimes you'll do the little circle and then you paint all of it. And then you see you want the head a little bigger or you want the body a little bigger. And it's not, it's really easy to do that. So I'm going to paint it all black. I think that's good. So you'll see with yours, maybe your head's a little small. I like mine. If you want, you can take out the hard little corners there, make it a little softer. Going in for a kiss. Look at that. These two are madly in love. Sitting right up to each other. It's normally at this part where I reshape them a little bit, add a little body. I know that some people like to add little tails so they flick out with their brush or add a little comb at the top. It's yours, you can do whatever you want to. Oh, me too, terrified. <laughs> Bruce Rangiz always chases me. The kid from the farm always <laughs> hurt when they bite. Oh, you're welcome, Patricia. All right, so there we go. That's the little birds. And then with that same brush, when I do branches, these little black ones, I go right at the top here, I'm gonna do one. Just start right in the tree and kind of drag it out. And if I do a branch out, I go back onto the same line and I drag it out. I'm just going to do a few of those. And you could also do this with a, like a really dark gray or just as many as you want. I'm going to go with a, like a charcoal color. They don't have to be completely black. So if you do the lines, it goes in front of this tree. So it means this one's in front, that one's in the back. And I use the same brush to do an outline for my tree. So I'm going to go down. Barely touching, doing an outline. And here and there, I kind of break into the tree like that. skip over my, my branch and then go down. Do the outline of your tree and you can add little black markings using your brush too. Do the other side.
and it doesn't have to be perfectly straight. It's a tree, remember. I'll bring it closer so you can see what the lines look like. And then this one looks like it's just blending into the background and this outline is going to bring it out. I have two trees and I also like to use this black and just add a little bit more detail in here. The black just makes it pop a little bit more. Oh, you can do an outline for your branch too. Tip of the brush. You might have to use a really thin brush to do this unless you know how to just do like the tip of the brush to get a really thin line. Like that. I also like to do a little bit of, not too much, but just a little bit of markings on my little branch. Barely touching. This one I did a little bit more detail. You can see how much I did there. Oh, and I love my little dots everywhere. Little three dots, three dots there and here. It's just something I do on a lot of my paintings. How's everyone doing? Are you guys breathing? Are you having fun? It is cute. Thank you. Tell please help how much you put on tails on them. Are you talking about the fluff at the bottom of the tail? So some people do it like this, they, so that's the bird bottom, like this, and then you just flick out the brush like that. Just like that. So literally just flicking the brush. If that's what you mean. Thank you again, lovely. You're most welcome. Oh, and then the final thing would be if you have red paint, you can do your little heart right there. I also have on my painting a little heart in the tree with the carving of our initials. Tien's loves Frida. So you can do that. I normally paint it gray with a black outline and then just the initials on the inside. You'd like to add that. Look at that. Love is in the air. First time painting with you, having a wonderful time. Thank you. Naomi, you are most welcome. All right, so I have a little bit of time, so I'm going to show you how to do that heart that I do. The engraving. So I'll do a little heart, pick a spot on your tree, and I do a little heart in gray, a little bit lighter than that. Like that. Do an outline. Just so that it pops a little more.
There we go. And that's how I do that. Thank you so much for joining me. And please come join me again next week. Uh, I think I'm live next week. We do have vacation coming up, but I think it's the following week. So I'll see you guys soon. Um, I'm going to post a selfie. Please come and post your photo. Let's see how you did. And I'll see you guys soon. Thank you. Good night.